There are so many different versions of white and shades of white from cool to warm and everything either side of that. And that's why um, often, you know, it's, it's worth its weight in gold to actually engage someone who can look at this and look at this space and understand what's going on and then say, okay, I would use this shade of white and then we're gonna do this kind of color with it and then we're gonna do this with it. And then this, I mean, this has got beautiful gold through it, but this is something a bit more exciting as well. So this is Christian Lacroix. This year, for International Women's Day, we at Learn with Samita are very privileged to have someone very special with us. Tony from Tony & Co. Founder of Tony & Co. based in Melbourne, Tony is an interior designer and a stylist. But you know what? I'll stop talking, stop babbling and I'll ask Tony to tell us a little more about Tony & Co. Over to you, Tony. Well, thank you, Samita. And hello, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I feel very privileged to be on Learn With Samita. Um, yes, Tony, uh, founder of Tony & Co. Um, I am a designer and stylist. Um, my background is 25 years as an advertising producer. Um, so producing advertising campaigns, still and video, um, and transitioned over the years into um, uh, event management and design and styling and decorating. And now I do lots of varied projects in the space of design and um, decorating and styling. So tell me, did it grow organically? How did you start and how did it all snowball? You said it snowballed into, it's, it's actually snowballed into something pretty enormous. So yes. how did that happen? Yes, and that was actually never the plan. Um, it, it's, I, I guess everybody has a different story about how they sort of found their path. Um, and mine was very much um, finishing year 12, couldn't wait to leave school. Um, not that I'm condoning that, I'm just saying that was my, <laughs> that was my journey. Um, I was a terrible student um, and I would look out the window and daydream all the time. And so I sort of left school not thinking uni was ever an option. And so I'm a very visual learner and I'm a doer. So everything I've done has very much been self-taught. Um, and I landed, um, uh, well actually my first job was in a law firm, which is hilarious. <laughs> Anybody that knows me must think, oh my goodness, back in the days when there were um, typewriters. Um, so I sort of found myself in, an, in, an, in the advertising agency um, as a receptionist to begin with and I sort of looked around and thought look at all these amazing jobs here but actually what I like is the producer's job that person that organizes everything deals with the creative um, I think I can do that and so I chased that and I chased that by um, uh, volunteering and doing freebies and you know hounding people to give me work and learn about the job of a producer um, and so I sort of I, I landed first as a, an audio producer mm -hmm. um, in, in Adelaide and worked there a couple of years which didn't which was an amazing job but it wasn't the didn't have the visual aspect and so I moved on and then worked with various directors and photographers um, producing shoots for them and casting people and styling them and you know doing the locations and all that sort of stuff so 
all of those sorts of things um, added to the pool of these different skills that I could do. Um, and, and then, yes, I sort of bounced around in the advertising industry. Um, I worked in ad agencies, um, one of the biggest in the world actually, um, as a producer and loved it. And 25 years later, I thought to myself, gosh, I feel like I'd, I feel like I'd um, produced um, and worked with many amazing people and brands, Country Road and Nike and, and all that sort of stuff. And, but I wanted to do something different, which is where the interior design um, and personal styling sort of started. So it always has been um, a journey of um, just being open to what was there and always, always saying yes. That's my, that's my hot tip in life. Say yes and then work out how to do it. I am glad you have such a diverse work experience because you were just talking about how we should combine the right and the left brain, you know, pragmatism vis-a-vis -vis, um, creativity mm. and you combine both sides so well. Mm. So do you think as a designer, because most of us designers, we lose track of practicality, you know, so mm. what would be your tip to someone who's wanting to get into something creative at the same time, we need to understand that we have to have food on the table and a roof over our head. So your thoughts, please. Yes, uh, well, I, th I think that is so true. And, and I always, um, I've always, whether it's in the production area or design, I approach my work in a very practical way, um, in, a, in a, almost a project management way for each project I do. So whether it's just sourcing some um, cushions and throws and uh, you know a smaller job or literally starting a new build and working with the architect and the builder or doing personal styling you have to have a plan you have to have a budget and stick to a budget mm. because you can be the best <laughs> insert whatever you want there but if you can't stick to the budget or if you don't know what the plan is and, and you can't sort of work to a timeline um, which is where production, being a producer, has really helped me sort yeah. of transfer those skills. Um, you will lose track of it. So um, it's, it's amazing to be creative, but you have to also bring yourself back to, to understand what the brief is, mm -hmm. understand what the budget is, Very important. and understand how you are then going to achieve. And I always work backwards. I always yeah. work backwards. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really good way to do it, not keep it open-ended. Now, I can see some interesting things. Um, what's happening here? Ah, so look, um, the these are sort of just some samples of different stones and natural stones and engineered stones and um, wallpaper and paints and things. The work that the work that I do now is um, I mainly focused on um, residential and commercial design. So design, decorating, and styling, and that comes in lots of different forms. So we were talking about this before that there are the people that just need um, help with reconfiguring yep. their current furniture, and that's okay. They don't want to spend anything. So they'll get me in for a few hours just to really help them work with what they have. Then there are the people that um, need help to select, you know, they might be doing a bathroom renovation or kitchen, and they need help with selecting um, a suite of materials that actually work together. Yeah. Um, and, and colours that work together or finding, um, and I brought this along because this is a very interesting thing. This is literally just a handful of white paint samples. So I'll turn up to a client with this and they say, we want to paint white. 
and and there are so many different versions of white and shades of white from cool to warm and everything either side of that and that's why um, often you know it's it's worth its weight in gold to actually engage someone who can look at this and look at this space and understand what's going on and then say okay I would use this shade of white and then we're going to do this kind of colour with it and then we're going to do this with it and it's you know it's 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 so helpful and it will save you time and money. Mm. Absolutely. See, once you've painted the walls, you cannot change it immediately. You know, it costs time and money. Well, it so does. So it's important that you start with the right white. Correct. If you have, a, say, a white with a blue tinge, you can end up looking like a hospital. Like that's, <laughs> that, that's exactly right. You yeah. know? And, and white, I mean, white is such a beautiful way. And people often ask me, what is the best way yeah. to freshen up? your home especially, not so much with resident, uh, with commercial, but residential, I often attend consultations and they say, we just want to freshen up the house. Yeah. And I say, you know, what's your budget? Yeah. Um, and if they can afford to paint, yeah. I promise you that will be instant, instant refresh. Freshen up. It yeah. Freshen up, make it, it just makes it feel more contemporary, especially yeah. if you sort of, you have a home that is, is sort of tending to feel a bit yellowy beige mm -hmm. and with you know um, styles come and go um, trends come and go mm -hmm. um, and as a designer we have to you know work with um, to enhance the look of what the client wants mm -hmm. um, but we're there also to add our own ideas and to dare them in a way mm -hmm. otherwise we're just you know what are we there for um, so it's yeah. It's about helping to choose those those correct um, those correct colours and materials and textures and things. Now, Tony, the problem is well, the moment I mention interior designer, my clients, my friends, my family, they'd say, "Oh, no, 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 no! It's expensive." Would you hire an interior designer?